person camp meeting i need you guys to register and i realize that there's some economic challenge i get it i get it but we have everything set up for you i'm telling you i promise you you will not regret your investment we are finding hotels that are a little outside of the city that are much more doable in terms of cost so i need you to register 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 even if you don't make your hotel yet we're going to post some new hotels we still got about 14 days but i need i need you the school of the holy spirit you birthed this to register and i don't see a lot of you on the list those of you that are in detroit register go to eventbrite and register good morning your grace bishop uh god bless you bishop hill amen good morning amen wendy good morning are you registered come on candace let's go everybody needs to be at camp meeting that's in these classes it's gonna be so powerful so 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 good the tents are going up uh it's it's gonna be amazing but i need you to come and i need you to serve I need you to teach. I don't book um, big time teachers. I use the team here from the School of Holy Spirit. So I need you to register and I need you to come teach, come preach, come minister at the altar, come minister in the tents, baptism of the Holy Spirit with Dr. Skillman, come minister in the choir, come and minister and let's get Pentecost in the city of Detroit. Let's get the city to Pentecost. Praise God. Let's get the city of Detroit overflowing with Holy Spirit. Let's get them here. And I need you to be here to help us to get it done. Praise God. So register. Go today and register. Even if you have to get a bunch of folk in the car and drive. I know airfares are high, but get a bunch of people in the car and y'all drive up. And I promise you, that weekend, Wednesday, so you come in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, stay over till Sunday. It's going to be amazing. And that afternoon, we're having a good old party. Bishop CJV Day is going to be exciting. Praise God, food. It's going to be fun and just celebrations and testimonies. Praise God. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful weekend. August 4 through 7, I need to see the class, School of the Holy Spirit at camp meeting all right i need y'all to do it now pray about it again and click that link and go to eventbrite or you may go to our website at www.gotellin.org 1.2 uh 1200 people were viewing yesterday morning i haven't even checked to see what it is uh from last evening Praise God. Hallelujah. Quincy. Oh, I know. I know. I know it's your 20. I understand. I understand. But those of you, amen, you don't have a good reason. I'm looking for you. Faith deliverance. That's my good friend, Bishop Barbara Amos. Yes. AME Zion, Devon Horton. God bless you. Come on in, folks. Yes, 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 yes. Let's get registered and let's be in attendance. We are dealing with uh, purity. We're dealing with purity in the inner life, in our emotional life. Anita says, it's a beautiful drive from the Pennsylvania area. Come on, sugar. You know, I need you, Dr. Sheila Donald Johnson, our pastor to worship. Lenita Jenkins, let's go. Okay, somebody just got appointed to a pastoral appointment. Praise God. Congratulations. Woo, you know, I like that kind of preaching. Yes, Quincy. Yes, come on. Jump in the car. Good morning, my Sora. Dennis Wellens Glover. God bless you. It is time for camp meeting. And I want to see you there. We are dealing with spiritual formation. And the Holy Spirit has really been uh, just kind of talking to me and, and, and dealing with me about offense. The spirit of offense. Yes, Mother Pearl, I know we're praying for you and Papa. Travis Wells, good morning, Sonia Bit Golden. She preached for us in uh in Florida. Come on up in, preach in Detroit. Hallelujah. Erica, God bless you. 
Erica Bennett, she says, I received my first pastoral appointment last Thursday. Yay. A-M-E, praise God. God bless you, Erica. Holy Spirit is being poured out on all flesh. My daughter attended uh, that church at Faith Deliverance. Amen. Good morning, April, and good morning, Alan. Thank you for your service last night. Dr. Noreen is going to be preaching and teaching at the camp meeting. Renee Elizabeth, Leatrice Fuller Ellis, good morning. Let's go. Praise God. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time. We are dealing with our emotional selves. Does Holy Spirit have access to our feelings, to our emotions, to our feelings? Does Holy Spirit, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Denise, I know, I know, I know, but I'm telling you, God is healing. God is a healer. Janine Daly, God bless you, Pastor, and thank you for that book. Uh, Suzette Blanc, Charlotte Poole, good morning. Listen, I want to ask this question. Does Holy Spirit have access to your emotions? Woo! That is a huge question. And I want you to answer it for yourself. Does Holy Spirit have access to my emotions. Wow. Have I given Holy Spirit access to my feelings? Woo! Does Holy Spirit control my feelings, reactions? Have I given Holy Spirit access to my feelings? Woo! Hey, good God Almighty. Come on here, Elvis Lanita. Woo, Ray Baba Nioche. <laughs> Suzette Blunt. Ah, that I'm a shake I'm a see. Glory to God. Does Holy Spirit have access? to my feelings and my emotions. This is an honest question that many believers need to answer. Does Holy Spirit have access to my feelings, to my emotions? Have I ever surrendered my feelings, my emotions, my inner life to Holy Spirit. Mm. Have I ever done that? Have I ever made that a priority? Have I ever said, Holy Spirit, I give you access to my emotions and to my feelings that you might perfect me in this area that you might be glorified in this area Woo! Hataba. hallelujah or do we treat offense like a friend like a normal companion Come on, Heidi. Does Holy Spirit, I love this girl, Heidi. She said, I got to do it now. I love this girl. See, I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. Glory to God. Woo, Benita. Thanks, Oh, Reba Mamasiya. I had not let Holy Spirit control my emotions. I would be a mess. Dr. Skillman, you better know it. 
<laughs> Good morning, Earlene, sissy, sissy. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's do it right now. Let's, let's follow. <laughs> I have to turn my feelings over to the management of Holy Spirit. This morning, uh, where am I lacking? Lacandra, God bless you. Hallelujah. I surrender my emotions and my feelings to you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. This is what happens. This is what happens. Glory to God. With the saints, we give him, we try to give him our bodies. I give you my body. I give you that. But Lord, I have not ever surrendered my emotions to you. And so my emotions have pretty much been under my own control. Uh, and they pretty much control me. I, it's not like I'm controlling them at all. Ooh, Jade says we should be the most refreshing, unoffendable people in the planet. Absolutely. Ooh, come on, Elder Demetrius. Let's do it. I love it because from a man's perspective, sometimes men uh, are not given permission to express their emotions and their feelings, and you have them as much as us. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabbi Masia. Hallelujah. I feel God in this place. Oh, Rabbi Rebba by Adrian says, uh, I was not allowing a surrendering, but I had to so I could fully heal. I need to talk about that for just a moment. And I get it. I, I, I don't, I'm not at all a clinician in the area of uh, mental health or any of that. I don't claim to be that. But I do want to say something about your past and how to handle your past. When we have come through trauma, when we have come through abuse, abandonment, rejection, I understand that it causes sometimes deep emotional pain. I am so aware of that. I will never be dismissive of that. And I will never treat it lightly. I will never minimize that. But I do need to challenge you in the area of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I need to challenge you in that area. If you have received spirit baptism, if you have received Holy Spirit baptism, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, now listen to me carefully. When we get saved and we come into Christ, our emotions, our, our DNA, our temperament is not touched. The only thing that Holy Spirit, Jesus the Christ, and the Father convert at salvation is our human spirit. Our human spirit is transformed, awakened, and quickened, made alive. That is when you come to Jesus Christ. You come to Jesus Christ just as you are, broken, wounded, when, what, what, whatever state you're in. And the Lord receives you. And as you are, are you still are the only thing that has changed is your spirit your spirit was dead in trespasses and sin and now when you come into the presence of the lord by faith in christ jesus <laughs> faith in christ jesus you have become born of God. That simply means 
that your spirit man is born anew. So you have been born by the spirit because of placing your faith in Christ Jesus and his finished work. I get it. Oh, see, Ryan, that is what happens at conversions. Your hurt doesn't go away. Your childhood pain does not go away. Your offenses, your angers, your disposition doesn't change. When we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, Dr. Ingrid Ingram, we come just as we are and he, accept, he accepts us just as we are. But it's not as many have made you to believe. Song says, I looked at my feet, my feet looked new. I looked at my hands, my hand did too. That is an allegory. That's a that that is that is to 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 identify that your spirit man, which is the real you. The spirit man is the real you. And now your spirit man has been renewed by you cognitively, intentionally, mentally, making a profession of Jesus Christ. And so your human spirit is now brand new. Now, to add to that, Holy Spirit seals your spirit, seals it, so that now you can rest in your salvation. Amen? You are secure. You are safe. You are saved. However, your emotions are not saved. Your soul isn't saved. Your soul, your will, your soul has to now be retrained to live in agreement with your human spirit, your renewed human spirit. And so I want to help us. Your salvation is secure. Your spirit man is new. But your soul, soul damage, soul brokenness, soul injury is not saved. So now what has to happen after salvation is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. The study of the word of God. The fellowship of the saints. That has to now happen for your complete spiritual formation. Many of you think that when you gave your life to Christ, that all of a sudden you were going to be healed of your childhood hurts, your bad behaviors, your injuries, your disappointments. No, 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 no. No. Now you got to do the work. And I hear you all talk about being healed from your past. How exactly do you think that's going to happen? How do you think you're going to be healed from your past? You think God's going to do that? 
Are you expecting God to do that? Are you expecting? Are, are you expecting that? Are you expecting some type of supernatural um, happening that one day you wake up and you don't hurt anymore? That, that's not how this works, honey. And the majority of people will say, I need to be healed. I need to do this. I need healing. I, you don't know what I've been through. I, I, I've never read the Bible. You don't read the Bible. You've never sat down and read the scriptures. For in them, you can obtain deliverance. You can obtain healing, but you've never read it. <laughs> oh, shakaba. You are now, you are now in the kingdom. You are now in the body of Christ. But you don't go to Bible study. You don't read the Bible to just sit and read it, to discover God, to discover his ways, his attributes, to learn him. You want to be healed, but you're not doing the work. You have to do the work. And the work is a spiritual job. It's a work, not discounting counseling. I'm not discounting therapy, but I'm here to tell you that you have to do the soul work through Holy Spirit, through the word and through the fellowship of believers. There is no magic to this. There is no magic to your healing from hurt. You're healing from past pain. You're healing from past. There's no magic. You gotta put the work in. You gotta pray in the spirit. You gotta get off of the TV. You gotta get some help if you need it. But at the end of the day, the counselor or the therapist can only help you to identify root causes, help you to identify portals, help you to identify the original traumas help you to identify the lie-based thinking. But at the end of the day, you got to put the work in. Now, while you're putting the work in, you're still not excused. Listen to me. You're not excused because you've been hurt. You're not given a pass to be offensive or to be offended. You've got to understand the delicate balance of becoming a believer of Jesus Christ, receiving the baptism of Holy Spirit, and now go through the process of spiritual formation got to do the work. You got to do the work. I love this clever. Like when you get hired at a new job, you're hired, but now you got to learn to do the job. Now you got to learn how to walk. You've got to forgive. People say, I want to be healed. Have you forgiven? No. I don't know why I got to forgive. Then you'll never be healed. See, you got to do the work. You've got to do the work and you have to do the work every day. Come on. LJ said, I got to, I got, to, I'm willing to roll up my sleeve and hunker down. You got to hunker down on your own healing and it should take you forever. You cannot use that as an excuse. Not when he has given us Holy Spirit, given us his word and given us the local church. You, 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 you got to forgive. You don't want to forgive. You haven't forgiven. Let me tell you something. I'm telling you right now that once you forgive, and, and, and I don't want to hear no foolishness about, well, I forgave her, but I didn't forget it. Then you didn't forgive. You didn't forgive. Let me tell you about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a, 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 an accounting term. Forgiveness is I 
cancel the debt. That's one part of forgiveness. But the other part of forgiveness is, and I extend credit to you again. Ooh, Tiara, it shouldn't be a full time. You, you, you got to be able to come to an end of that. Do it and get done with it. Don't spend your whole time in the earth working on trauma working on pain, working on forgiveness. Be quick about it. Don't spend your entire journey in the earth working on childhood because you will be ineffective. You will appear before the Lord empty. It shouldn't take forever. It's not intended to be an ongoing process. I'm telling you right now, this there is so much lying going on from hell. There is so much happening. There is so much going on. There is so much happening in the earth that the devil has, has seeped into the church and got y'all walking in deception and delusion, walking in pain, walking, 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 walking. And you never get to your purpose. You never get to fulfilling the great commission. You never win a soul because the whole time that you receive the Holy Ghost, you've been working on yourself. <laughs> Somebody said, Oh, <laughs> Elder Demetrius said, ah, it's extending that credit again. That's it. I canceled the debt, but can I extend you credit again? That's what forgiveness of a loan does. That's what forgiveness does. Forgiveness says you, you botched that up. You didn't handle that right, but we forgive the debt. And, and, and then it turned right around and you apply for credit and you get it again. That's forgiveness. That's that's what bankruptcy does. Bankruptcy is a time of redemption. Cancels all your debts. And then you go back to those same creditors and, and you get a credit card again. Why? Because the debt has been forgiven. It's not on your record now. Woo! I'm telling you somebody right now you all are distracted. I saw somebody say, I got to forgive myself. Where do you get that from? Where, where do you get that teaching from? That doesn't come from the word of God. That th those are, those are, woo, <laughs> come on, come on. Why do you keep going up to the altar for the same thing every week? Why don't you pull the trigger on your forgiveness? Why don't you pull the trigger on your wholeness? Why don't you pull the trigger on your emotional purity? Why don't you pull the trigger on your emotional feelings and your feelings and your emotions being under the Holy Spirit's reign? Why don't you pull the trigger? Why don't you just wake up one day and say, Holy Spirit, I'm done fighting. I'm done walking in offense. I'm done walking in anger. I'm done with stomping my foot, slamming doors. I'm done with rolling my eyes. I'm done with walking around with bitterness. I'm done. I'm just done. And from this day forward, Holy Spirit, I'm yours. Why don't you just do that? Why do you drag this out like a bad movie? There's nothing worse than being in a and watching a movie that's bad and it's five hours long. Why do you keep doing this to yourself? Why do you constantly afflict yourself over and over again with the same trauma why do you do that to yourselves why do you keep rehashing why do you keep revisiting why do you keep re-injuring yourself my god when will you pull the trigger say this is enough Woo Rabbi Kasha. How, 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 how do you just keep going? Why do you keep, why do you, why, why? Oh God, my God is so powerful. When you walking around with the advantage and you walking around with the advantage and bitterness, the advantage and, 
Come on, folks. When are you going to pull a trimmer? When, when are you just going to say enough? Enough. I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm so done with me. I am so done with my raggedy emotions and my raggedy feelings and my raggedy way of handling stuff. Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. You are the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I'm walking around with the power of God in my life and I'm still mad. I'm still hurt. I'm still angry. I'm still out of control when I feel pressure, when I'm in a corner, when I don't like something. When will you finally say, Holy Spirit, I surrender. I yield to you for you to do the completed work of Christ in my life. I yield. I'm done. Oh, right here. So I can be fruitful, so I can be productive, so I can win the loss, so I can walk in freedom. Oh, glory to God. So I can be everything you want me to be. I'm so done with being raggedy. I'm so done with holding grudges. I'm so finished with revenge. I'm Because guess what? I'm the one carrying this. So I'm done. I'm so done. Oh my God. I got to feed all these prisoners. I got to make sure they take a bath. I got to make sure that all these prisoners that I'm holding captive in the prison of my emotions and the prison of my feelings, I got to hold, I got to feed these prisoners. I got to, I got to make sure that they get health care. I got to make sure that they don't dial me in the prison and I got to keep them alive because I want to revisit my pain whenever I want to revisit my pain. I want to go down and talk to my, my captives, my prisoners. I want to remind myself how I didn't have a daddy. How I didn't have a mama. How I didn't have a sister. I didn't get a bike. How the church didn't like, didn't tell me the truth. How to pass the lie. How I got raped. How I got violated. How the many abortions I had. I'm just going to keep feeding these prisoners. I'm going to take ownership and responsibility for all of these prisoners that I have arrested, that I'm holding captive in my soul because I don't want to give them release. Woo! 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 Why don't you give them a pardon? Why don't you extend to them a pardon? Life in prison and you're the warden? Life in prison and you are responsible for them? Life in prison, you just gonna hold every bad event and every trauma and every violation in prison, in the prison of your soul. Woo! And how often are you going to go down and visit them? How often are you going to go and sit and commiserate with them? Come on now. How many times you want to hear the story of how many times somebody did something to you and this ain't, ain't worked out for you? How many times do you want to sit with that and eat that and drink that and, and, and become that? Why? Why would you want to do that? Why do you want to cry about that again? Why do you want to cry? Oh, God. Oh, God. You know what I did? Oh, oh, oh. Why do you want to have that kind of life? Why do you want to be in performing arts? <laughs> Why do you want to always be on stage with your feelings and your emotions? I'm talking to somebody by the spirit right now. Why do you want to be an actress or an actor? Why don't you get out of the play? Why do you want to be a warden of a prison? Come on, folks. Why do you keep wanting to visit bitterness? Why do you want to keep drinking anger? Why do you keep wanting to being offended? My God, do you know what it's doing to your body? What it's doing to your soul? Do you know what it's doing to your productivity? Do you realize that you have the power of the Holy Spirit? You can shut that prison down. You can open the door and let every prisoner out. And then you can shut it and lock it and bury it forever. Do you realize the freedom and get yourself out of there? Why do you want to be a prisoner and you're the warden? Does that make sense? How are you the prisoner and the warden? 
Why do you keep going down there talking to that stuff? Why do you keep dragging that stuff up before God? Why do you keep praying about this stuff? Why? Why do you always want to be on the other side of crying in prayer? <laughs> and your prayer life is always weeping and wailing and whining and hurting. When does your prayer life become, oh God, infuse me, empower me by your spirit today to be effective, to win the laws, to get people baptized in the Holy Spirit, to heal the sick, to be the catalyst on my job for change. Holy Spirit, give me my assignment for the day. Why do you want to be in the dungeon talking to these folks? Bitterness and anger and rage and unforgiveness. Why do you want to be a friend with those people? Ooh, Rabbi Kasha. Why? 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 Why do you want to do that to yourself? Why do you want to keep being the warden of your own prison? Ooh, Rabbi Kasha. Ooh, some of you like the attention. Some of you want that kind of negative. You want that kind of affirmation. That is so perverted. And I speak life to you now, spirit baptism. Those people went into that upper room. They had all these issues. They had trauma. They had pain. They had rejection. They had fear. They had anxiety. They had all of that. But when they came out of that upper room, you never see that struggle on them anymore. Oh, come on, folks. Come on, people. And then you spew it out on people. And then you, 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 make, you make people uh, not want to know Jesus because they don't see a, a valid, authentic move of Holy Spirit in your life. Your witness is marred. Your witness, your wi oh, come on. Hallelujah. You don't want that, folks. You don't want to spend your whole time. I'm speaking prophetically. I'm not looking at any of my notes. I have not gotten to anything, but it's a testimony of God's grace when you can walk in the midst of evil and not be evil. It's a testimony of God's grace when you can walk in the middle of sin and not be a sinner. It's a testimony of God's grace when you can walk among those that are, that are wicked against you and persecute you for no cause. And yet you don't feel like you need to take retribution. It's the grace of God. That's why he gave us Holy Spirit. That's why, that's why you are so, in, you are unproductive because you are living in your past and you're visiting all of those people. You're visiting the uncle, the mother, the people that you're feeding them. You keep doing it and you keep doing it and you are going to never reach your full optimum potential in life if you are always a prison warden. The freedom of a forgiving heart, the freedom of walking offenseless, the freedom of being unoffendable, the freedom of it. Ooh, if you allow your compulsions to dominate your life, you're going to miss every opportunity, every good and perfect gift. You're going to miss opportunities, folks, and it won't be the devil's fault. It won't be because God didn't send it. It won't be because the church didn't uh, provide it, but because you continue to walk in your evil compulsions, you continue to make your compulsions a pattern. You continue to make your compulsions and your negative Activity, a pattern of your life. You are going to miss all of the good. You're going to be hindered from growth and because all because your inner person, your inner reality has never been touched by Holy Spirit, has never been touched by the word of God, has never been touched by the people of God. Every time somebody tried to touch it, you got mad. Every time somebody touched it, put their finger on it, you got attitude. You're going to miss opportunities, folks. You're going to miss open doors. You're going to miss platforms where you can be an amazing witness for Jesus Christ. Oh, Rabbi Bahata, these footholds are real. You got to look at your overreactions. You got to look at why you are like that. You got to look at why it takes you a long time to forgive and trust people again. You've got to look at that. You've got to pay attention to the signs 
of your spiritual formation, your inner life, your inner life, your inner life. And if your gospel is hid, it is hid to those that are lost. If your gospel is hid, filmed, vague, if your gospel is hid, it is hid to those that are lost. How long must you brood? How long must you regret? How long must you live in anger? How long must you operate in these compulsions, patterns, and triggers? How long, folks? Ooh, pour your spirit out. Come fill me up, Holy Ghost. How long? How long? How long? How long? How long will you resist, Holy Spirit? Work in your heart. How long will you resist? Holy Spirit's outpouring. How long will you allow Satan's footholds to occupy your life? How long? How long you have to ask yourself these hard questions? How long will I be like this? How long will I be on the injured list? How long will I be in critical care? How long will I be on the ICU ward? How long must I be hooked up to a ventilator? How long must I must walk around with an IV? How long, how long, how long? How long before this surgery heals? How long before they take out the stitches? How long? How long must you act childish? How long must your reactions be unrecognizable as those of Christ? How long before we see the fruit of the Spirit? How long before we see love and mercy and temperance and self-control? How long, folks? How long, how long, how long? Ooh, before we can hold you accountable. How long before you can take a rebuke and not get angry? How long before someone can bring something to your attention and it doesn't flip you off and make you think they don't love you and make you feel like that child at three? How long, folks? How long? How long? How long are you going to resist Holy Spirit? How long are you going to fight Holy Spirit? How long are you going to deny him access to your feelings and to your emotions? How long are you going to sit in church puffed up and Man, how long are you going to stay home because you don't go to church anymore? How long are you going to isolate yourself? How long are you going to be in that silo by yourself, trying to serve God by yourself? How long? How long, folks? Before you make a clean break. How long? How long? Ask yourself how long. Oh, God, this is not for anybody else. I don't want you to have anybody else on your mind. I want you to only be thinking about yourself. Girl, how long? Sir, how long? Ask yourself how long before you go back to serving in your church? How long before you get back on the choir? Your feelings got hurt? You took your whole voice away from the corporate worship? How long must we be childish? How long? I don't like him. Well, learn him anyway. How long before we stop voicing what we like and what we want? How long? How long? I don't like nobody tell me what to do. How long you going to be like that? I ain't like the way they said it. How long you going to be like that? How long before you get back to working the altar? Before you get back to ushering? Before you get back to serving? How long? Well, they hurt me. He said it and I like it. How long? So now you're not serving nowhere? You at home by yourself? Come on, folks. You don't see that? You don't see how the enemy has disturbed you and, and you are straight up distracted and off? Now, you know, Bishop, I, uh -uh, how long? How long? Jesus said in Luke 23 and 24, Father, forgive them. 
for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. Let us not be blind to the fact. Let us not be blind how we justify our own sinful actions. Let us not keep justifying the fact that I was just born like this. And if you knew what I was and what I went through, I don't want to know. And I'm sorry you went through it, but baby, can we just get the job done? I don't want to know. I'm so sorry you've been, I'm so sorry about that. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. But baby, there's a whole world out here that needs to be saved. You can't hold up your whole world for one person or one answer that. How long? How long? How long are you going to be evil and mean? How long are you going to walk in unforgiveness? How long, folks? How long? Lord, forgive them for they knew not what they did. Forgive them. And Lord, I forgive. I release. How long? How many more trips to the altar? How many more prayers are you going to pray? Well, I've been praying. The Lord hasn't answered. Well, that should be a sign. And you got to get up. You got to get over it. You got to release those prisoners. You got to let those prisoners go. You got to go down and pardon every one of them. You have to give them a permanent pardon. And once you give them a pardon, guess who gets free? You. When have you given Holy Spirit access to your emotions and to your feelings? When? Jesus is on the cross, not for anything he did. He's on the cross innocent. He's on the cross bleeding. He's on the cross dying. Innocent. And yet he forgives. I, I just feel like Holy Spirit is going down into deep places. Holy Spirit is digging down your childhood, your pain, your hurt. John Royster, a permanent pardon. Don't give them a, a pardon and then put them on, a, 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 on that ankle thing. No, let them go. Stop monitoring their behavior. Stop monitoring what they do. Give them a pardon and release them and shut your prison down. The only reason your prison is up is because you have prisoners. Ooh. You have prisoners. Give them a pardon. Give them what they deserve because of what you've received from Christ. You received a pardon. Why do you keep feeding the prisoners? Why do you keep maintaining them? Why do you keep feeling responsible for them? They can't pay you back. Somebody needs to hear that. They can't pay you back. They can't fix what happened. They can't redo it. They can't undo it. They can't pay you back. Let them go. Woo, Shakanda Ramanda. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let your prisoners go. Let them go. Search your feelings. Search your heart. Go into the deep crevices and see where your prisoners are. And every time something happens, it's that same prisoner that is triggering your responses. This is why God has given us Holy Spirit to help us. Pardon, glory to God. Woo, to give pardon for sin and a peace that endure. Thine own presence to cheer and forgive. Faith for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings are mine with 10,000.
thousand beside great is thy faithfulness. God, I thank you. Oh, great mm. is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see all I have needed. Thine own hand has provided. Oh, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin. Pardon for sin. And a peace that endureth. Isn't that what you want to live? Do you want to be saved and spirit baptized and bound? And locked up in, in in a job that you really don't want. That you want to be awarded when you grow up. When somebody asks you, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? That you say, I want to be a warden. I want to be a, I want to be a warden of a prison. I want to feed prisoners. I want to take care of prisoners. I want to arrest prisoners. Is that what you said? Pardon for sin. And a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Why don't you want to be free? Why don't you want to be free? So give Holy Spirit access to your emotions and to your feelings. So you can resign from the job of prison warden. Woo. Blessings are mine. The 10,000 beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great. And if God is that faithful to me, I must be that faithful to him. And I want you to choose right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that I'm going to give Holy Spirit access right now today to my emotions and to my feelings because I desire purity in my inward parts. I desire emotional purity. I desire emotional purity in the era of Holy Spirit. <laughs> Eric can say, I resign effective immediately. How long? How long? <laughs> Here's my resignation, Anita Ford. Fanita says, I resign. And I'm a show. Woo. And don't put a tether on them to micromanage their behavior. Give them a full pardon. When the courts, the governor, powers that be grant full pardon. That citizen is released from a prison system and go back to a voting citizen with all rights and privileges restored. Records are sealed. Let's do it, folks. Let's do it. Let's do it. You didn't want to be a warden when you were a child. Why would you now decide to manage the prisoners of your feelings and your emotions? Because you don't want Holy Spirit to give access. You don't want to do it, but do it anyhow. Woo -hoo -hoo. I got to go. <laughs> it's time. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God in the name of Jesus. No ankle monitors, <laughs> no parole officer, and they don't have to report back. So you can be pure. And you can get on with the business of being what God has called you to be. <sighs> Gotta go. <laughs> 
In Jesus' name. I love y'all. Listen, register for camp meeting. Please, I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. Thank you.